President Assad tells the Russian paper Izvitsya that the dream of turning Syria into a Western dummy would never come true. And the, and the President asserts that the accusations of the use of chemical weapons are politicized and come after the victories of the Syrian army. And units of the Syrian Arab army defeat the terrorists of Jabhat al-Nusra and restore security and stability to Palmyra. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. President Bashar al-Assad asserted that Syria's message to the world is that the dream of those who wish Syria to become a dummy for the West would never come true. In an interview with the Russian paper Izvitsya, the President said that Syria was confronting the extremists who carry the ideas of Al-Qaeda together with some outlaws. The President said that Syria would strike against terrorism wherever the terrorists commit any crime. Syria will build its relations with various countries freely in order to preserve the interests of the Syrian people. The president said that the terrorists are gathered around the sources of financial support. They are extremists and it is easy for the supporting states to guide them. The president said that it is Israel which admits that it cooperates with the terrorists. Israel has repeatedly admitted that it was treating dozens of terrorists in its hospitals. These terrorists have been recruited by Washington and the West with Saudi finance since the early 1980s in order to fight the Soviet Union. Such terrorists could never hit Israel. The president pointed out that terrorism was not a winning card that anybody can put in his pocket. Terrorism is like a scorpion which might bite you at any time. So you cannot be with terrorism in Syria and against it in Mali. The president asserted that the accusations against Syria claiming its use of chemical weapons are politicized. Such accusations come against the background of the victories of the Syrian Arab army. The president added that Syria was the first country to call for an investigation committee. During the last few weeks, the president said, we held a dialogue with this committee and set up rules of cooperation, including the preservation of Syria's national sovereignty. The president pointed out that this was not the first time of presenting the military option against Syria. From the beginning, the U.S., France and Britain tried to intervene. However, the balance in the U.N. Security Council was against their intentions. The president said that the superpowers are able to wage wars, but are they able to achieve victory? They could never know the extent of such wars or how they would end. The president said that Russia was not defending Syria or its president today. The Syrian people could choose any president or any regime. This is not a problem. Russia is defending its own steadfast principles, which date back a hundred years at least. All the contracts signed with Russia are being implemented without any delay by the crisis or the American, European and Gulf pressures. Russia supplies Syria with what it needs to defend its people. The president said that there were states that gave direct support to terrorism in Syria. These included Qatar and Turkey in the first two years. Now, Saudi Arabia has replaced Qatar. Saudi Arabia has only money and can never achieve civilization or preserve it. As for Turkey, it can be guided with a few dollars by a Gulf country. As for the Geneva Conference, it should support the political solution in Syria. However, such a course cannot be followed before ending the foreign support of terrorism. Only then could it become easy to work on the political steps, including dialogue among the Syrian parties about the shape of the state in the future, the constitution and the laws. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov emphasized that Russia has received with deep concern statements made by Washington on the readiness of the U.S. forces to interfere militarily in Syria. The Russian Foreign Ministry said in a statement that Lavrov stressed during a telephone call with his U.S. counterpart John Kerry that the parties that, that call for a military intervention are blatantly trying to delete the joint Russian-American efforts to hold an international conference on the crisis in Syria. Lavrov expressed 
astonishment at the attempts of some representatives of the U.S. administration to prove the alleged complicity of the Syrian government in the incident which took place in El Ghouta, assuming the use of chemical weapons. Lavrov added that the Russian side called for refraining from putting pressure on Damascus, but rather called for seeking to provide suitable atmosphere to enable the United Nations experts' mission to conduct objective and unbiased investigations, pointing out that the incident in Ghouta came as a result of the inst intransigent opposition in order to accuse the Syrian government of all what has happened. Lavrov warned of the serious consequences against a possible new military intervention in the region. The U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry promised to study the Russian proposal and the two ministers agreed to continue contacts concerning the crisis in Syria. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Jawad Zarif discussed the crisis in Syria with the United Nations Assistant Secretary General Jeffrey Feltman, who is currently visiting Tehran. During his visit, Feltman is scheduled to also to hold talks with Iranian officials on the latest developments in the region, including the situation in Egypt and Lebanon. A media source in the Syrian government stressed that the Syrian government holds the armed terrorist groups the responsibility for the security and safety of the members of the United Nations team and their safe return. The People's Assembly strongly condemned the assassination of Dr. Anas al Naim, governor of Hama, by terrorist gangs and extremist mercenaries. The government said Dr. Naim was murdered during his work to carry out his national duties. A police source said that the terrorists detonated a booby-trapped car during the passing of the entourage of the governor in the city, killing him and wounding seven citizens, including three children. Syrian Arab Army units carried out several operations against terrorists in Damascus countryside, Suwaida, and Homs's countryside. Countryside units of our valiant army completely controlled the crossroads of Zamalka, killing and wounding several terrorists, some of whom non Syrians belonging to the so called Islam banner. The army carried out operations against their hideouts in a number of towns and villages. It destroyed several rockets in the Berze quarter. The army also discovered a tunnel used by terrorists near Al Umari Mosque in Al Qaboon. Another unit of the Syrian Arab army killed several terrorists. Other units destroyed machine guns used by the terrorists in Arbin, killing several of them. In Al Suwaida, the security forces of national defense captured nearly 400 kilograms of drug tablets prepared to be smuggled to the terrorist gangs in a bus coming from the countryside of Damascus. This operation came after receiving information about the smuggling of weapons and drugs from the neighboring countries across the Syrian desert. The driver of the bus admitted that he was part of a network smuggling these things to the terrorist gangs. In Homs countryside, units of the Syrian armed forces destroyed terrorist hideouts in several areas, killing and wounding many terrorists and destroying their heavy weapons. A unit of the Syrian army clashed with a terrorist gang along the Homs Palmyra highway and confiscated their lorry, which was full of highly explosive materials and Saudi and Libyan medicines belonging to the so-called the Monotheist Brigade. With well, this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can visit our website in English, www.syrianonline.sy. Stay with us. After the break, our economic news.